And now I'd like to welcome onto the stage Mr. Brandon from Redbud Industries to give a presentation on precision blanking line with Stretcher Leveller. Please give him a round of applause. Good evening. As mentioned, uh, my name is Brandon Kunkel. I'm from a company, Redbud Industries. We're based out of the United States. Um, I'm obviously here to talk about the, the new machine uh, at Mideast Metals, the precision blanking line. It also features a stretcher leveler. As mentioned already several times here tonight, is the, the first stretcher leveler that we have supplied to an Asian country producing stainless steel. Um, we first talked to uh, Mr. Kurum and the Kawaja family. We told them if, if you guys go down this route, we really feel like it can change the market here in Asia and in the Middle East. Uh, we've seen it happen in other locations around the world, and we feel pretty strong that this machine uh, will change the way that, uh, that customers demand material. So here is, uh, you've already seen several uh, photos and a video, but here's just a quick uh, picture of the line. Just a little bit about our country, I won't go, or uh, my company, I won't go too much into it. Uh, we are based near St. Louis, Missouri, if any of you guys have uh, ever traveled or lived in the United States. Uh, we have approximately 150 employees. We are a family-run business that are now in the second generation. Um, and we supply 50% of our business to international markets. Um, and I'm going to go through just some, some key features of the line. Uh, the bulk of my presentation will be on the stretcher leveler, but I did want to hit on some other key points of the line uh, that are featured in the precision blanking line. Uh, so for heavier material, uh, we have supplied Mideast Metals with a heavy gauge precision straightener. Uh, this machine has 11 rolls with big rolls. Uh, the diameter of the rolls are quite large to get coil sets out of the thicker gauge material, the 8, the 6, the 7 millimeter material. Uh, for lighter gauge material, uh, in the line is a Hair Voss Precision Leveler, um, very similar to the Precision Straightener. It just has smaller diameter work rolls um, and is perfect for the lighter gauge material. Um, really, with these machines, we're only really trying to get coil sets and crossbow out. Um, anything other than that, the stretcher leveler can pull out with no issues. Also in the line is an edge trim system um, to obviously cut the edges of the material to a very precise tolerance. They also have a pop-up inspection table. Um, here the operator can check for flatness out of the straightener or the leveler, as well as inspect the material for any defects. If they see a defect, they can reject the sheet from the prime stack to make sure that it does not get delivered to a customer. They can also apply PVC and paper to the material uh, to, to ensure that there will no, not be any marks or damage to the material when it gets to their customer. And this is the main machine that we're here to talk about tonight. Here's just a, a photo of it. I'll go uh, into more detail on this machine in a little bit. Uh, to, to measure the material uh, to precise tolerance, link tolerances, uh, we have supplied the line with a servo roll feed. Um, this is one of the most accurate roll feeds that you'll see in the market today. We use very high precise AC drives on this machine. Um, and the tolerances that you'll be able to achieve on this line is, is far superior than what you'll see on most lines that are in the market today. And we've also supplied them with a state-of-the-art prime shear uh, that can adjust for material that's out of square. So if their parts are coming out of square, you can actually pivot the shear uh, to produce square parts. So now let's get into uh, the bulk of my presentation, the stretcher leveler. Um, as you've heard today, it is the first and only stretcher leveler uh, processing stainless steel in Asia. Um, it's rated for 8 millimeter thickness and 18, 29 millimeter wide. And I have just a, a short video of a stretcher leveler just to kind of get an idea of what it's capable of. So you can see the wave in this material. This is obviously carbon steel. But this machine, the stretcher leveler, does not care what type of shape goes into the machine. So we are physically clamping on the material and stretching all the wave out. It's very easy to use. Uh, with most uh, leveling technology out there, it, it takes a very experienced operator 
uh, just to consistently get flat parts with a stretch of leveler. Um, it, it's a very simple technology. Uh, we're just using brute force. So how does stretcher leveling produce flat material that stays flat? And that's an important key because most customers will have some sort of machine, typically a roller leveler, that will make the material look flat. And that's only one part of the problem. Uh, if you guys have any laser machines, you'll, you'll see a lot of sheets that look flat, but then whenever it's laser cut, you'll see the material spring back. And that is because there's strapped stresses in the material. Um, the only way to guarantee that you will not have that issue is to have a machine with a, with a stretcher leveler uh, incorporated into it. So it's important to understand the leveling process to, to understand really how the stretcher leveler works. And it's all about elongation. Um, so with this picture here, this is what we call a stress strain curve. Um, so the YP represents the, the yield points of the material. So in this uh, diagram here, you can see uh, if you look at this line here, so we are only stretching to the yield point, and that's not good enough. You must go past the yield point to be able to sufficiently level the material. So again, no permanent change in this situation here because we have not gone past the yield point of the material. So issue number one, in order to produce flat material, you must equalize edge-to-edge -edge length differentials. A very common issue that you'll find in coils is what we call edge wave, where uh, the edges of the material are actually physically longer than the middle of the strip. And here's a, uh, a real life photo of that situation. And here's some really bad edge wave. Uh, believe it or not, this is a, a test facility that we have at our facility uh, in Redbud. And uh, believe it or not, we took this material and we put it into the stretcher leveler and we pulled that completely out, 100%. So it just shows you what the stretcher leveler is capable of. So this is what we call center buckle, where it's the opposite. So now the middle of the strip is actually longer than the edges of the strip. Here's a uh, real life photo of that as well. So how do we fix it? Uh, the most common type that you'll see all around the world, um, it's the easiest way to do it, but it's not the most effective, is using some sort of a roller leveler or passing the material through a series of rolls. Um, and this just kind of gives you an idea. So uh, one problem with just using a roller leveler is you are restricted to um, a given gauge range. Uh, it's all based on the diameter of the work roll and the spacing of the work rolls to determine what thicknesses you can uh, effectively level the material. Um, so you see in this diagram here, uh, typically you'll plunge the rolls quite deep in the beginning and then feather it out towards the end. Uh, the main issue, which I'll talk a little bit more here in a second, is with a roller leveler or any type of rolling uh, leveling system, you will never be able to work the center strand of the material. There's never uh, any way to be able to do that. So you can never guarantee that the sheet will be stress-free. And again, you can see here, we're doing a lot of work on the outer edges here, but in the middle strand, there's no work being done. Uh, and the problem with that is, is if you laser cut the material and there are trap stresses in the middle of the material, that's where you'll get the spring back. And again, here's just a, uh, another diagram of what a, a typical roll uh, sequence would be with a roller leveler. And in the best case scenario, we've done many studies with this, uh, with mills around the world, service centers around the world, with a roller leveler or a machine of that type, the best case scenario is that you can work the material past its yield point to 75 to 80 percent of the material. You'll never get better than that. So that's all you can guarantee with a uh, conventional roller leveler. So uh, let, one of the main uh, problems that you'll see in material is what's called coil set, where the material will actually want to take on the shape of the coil. Um, and to fix that, you will just basically plunge the rolls to an equal pressure uh, to be able to get the coil set out. It's typically not a real uh, hard issue to get rid of with a conventional roller leveler. Edge wave, which we've already looked at. So if you were to take a material that had edge wave in it and you were to laser cut it or slit it, 
what you would actually find is you will see that these outer strands here are actually longer than the middle strands. That's because they're, the material is physically longer on the edges. So you must be able to get that out before any kind of laser cutting or slitting operations or shearing operations. And to overcome that with a roller leveler, what you would typically do is you would plunge these middle rolls uh, deeper than the edges. Um, that will get rid of your edge wave, but the problem is, is you're doing no work to these outer strands. Um, you're working at very little or none at all, which is a problem uh, if you are doing any sort of uh, laser cutting or shearing operations. And this is just a diagram, so if we're trying to get out the edge wave, you can see we're doing a lot of work in the middle of the strand, but on the outer strands, very little work is being done. And center buckle, the other issue I talked about. If you were, again, if you were to cut uh, material that had center buckle, you would get uh, a similar issue, but in this case, since the middle strands are, are physically longer and we have more material in the center, if you were to shear it or, or slit it, uh, the strips in the middle would be physically longer. And to overcome that is just the opposite. We would actually uh, put more pressure on the rolls on the outer edges to make those physically longer to match the center strands, but again, we're not working anything in the middle of the strip, which is, again, it's a problem. And here's another diagram just showing the reverse. So if the material looks flat, why does it not stay flat? Um, again, I mentioned that in a lot of cases you'll see sheets that come off of a cut to length line and you'll say, well, it looks flat. How come whenever I laser cut it or shear it, it doesn't stay flat? And that is because of tra trap stresses. Um, as you saw on some of my diagrams, there's cases where we're at times not working any of the material, maybe on the edges or the center. Um, and that means that you're not equalizing the stresses within the material. And again, the, the main issue that we find is laser cutting with, with sheets that have not uh, gone through a machine like a stretch of leveler. And this is what you'll get. So if you have sheets that have trap stressed in it and went through just a conventional roll of leveler, you'll find this more often than not uh, being an issue with your material. And this is obviously not one to, uh, this is not useful for a customer. So why does this happen? So this uh, diagram here, you'll see that we have edge wave on the right side of the sheet. Um, again, you can see uh, the yield point right here. So what we're doing is we're trying to work the material from A to B more than the other side, D to E, because we're trying to make A and B physically longer to match the other side. Um, so what we're doing, as you can see on this diagram here, we're actually we're doing more work with A and B. So we're past the yield point on uh, that side of the material, which is good. The problem is if you look at E, D, and C, we're either just getting to the yield point or we're not even to the yield point. So there's no work that has been done there that's going to effectively level the material. And this is just a, uh, a distribution uh, that you'll see. Uh, so we're doing a lot of work again on A and B, but if you go down to D and E where it's the lighter colors, you'll see that there's very little work that has been done. So how do I know if I have worked the edge-to-edge -edge length differentials enough to make sure they are all the same length? Uh, with the conventional roller leveler? And the answer to that is, is you just don't. There's no way to guarantee that. Um, again, you can visually see that the sheet is flat, but you cannot guarantee that it's going to stay flat uh, after post-processing, shearing, uh, slitting, or, or laser cutting. So again, you'll see here that the, this sheet appears to be flat. You don't see any edge wave or center buckle, but if you would look at the stress strain curve, none of those points have been put past the yield point. Uh, so even though the sheet looks flat, it's a very dangerous game to take that sheet and to put it on a laser machine and assume that it's going to stay flat. And again, it's just a tug of war. Um, it's, it's the sheet that has stresses within the material that are constantly pulling with each other, and the key is to relax those stresses, make them relax to where whenever you laser cut, uh, the sheet will stay flat. And again, here's another uh, customer of ours that just has a roller leveler, no stretcher leveler, and this is what you'll commonly find. Just because it looks flat does not mean it's relaxed. So how do I make sure it stays flat? So in order to produce flat material that stays flat, you must also exceed, exceed the yield in all the material, top to bottom, side to side. And now how do I do that? And the best way that we found to do it um, in any of the technology that's out there in the world today is, is via stretcher leveler. Um, again, this machine here, and we've seen it around the world, change markets whenever it's put in. Um, and we feel it's going to do the same for Mideast Metals. 
with this machine, we can guarantee that we're going to work the material 100% from edge to edge to side to side. We can guarantee the material is going to be stress-free for any laser cutting or post-processing uh, operations. So how does it work? It's very simple. It's pure brute force and tension. Uh, the way it works is we've got uh, a machine that has an entry clamp and an exit clamp. And we are physically just clamping down and stretching with a lot, a lot of, a lot, a lot of strength. Um, and with that strength, we can guarantee that we're going to stretch the material 100% past its yield point. And again, it's no bending. So we're not, uh, we're not restricted to the roll diameter or the spacing. And like I said earlier, it's also much easier to use uh, with a stretch a leveler, our machine is smart enough to know with the specifications put into the machine how much we need to stretch the material. With the roll a leveler, it, it is a real black art. You must have operators that are very experienced. Um, and even if they are very experienced, you'll still find issues. Material uh, sometimes is just weird and it can be very hard to effectively level with just a conventional roller leveler. With the stretch a leveler, it's very simple. We know the, the yield point and the, and the yield strength of material. So we plug that into our machine, and our machine is smart enough to know how far we need to stretch the material to make sure it's going to be flat and stay flat. So stretch the levelers equalize the strip dimensionally and exceeds the yield point in 100% of the material in one operation. So this is, uh, again, that same picture that I showed you earlier with the roller leveler. You can see with A and B, we're working the material a lot with the roller leveler, but with C, D, and E, not so much. With a stretcher leveler, you can see it's, it's just the opposite. We're working the material all the way through the material 100% uh, past the yield point. And all the fibers across the width of the strip has been stretched past their yield point and to the same length. And uh, what's, what I talked about earlier with a roller leveler, you can only guarantee at best case scenario 75 to 80% of the strip will be yielded past its yield point. With a stretcher leveler, we can 100% guarantee that the 100% of the material will be stretched past its yield point. So the strip is equalized dimensionally and all the material has exceeded the yield point. And again, here is just a, uh, a diagram of a sheet that's completely relaxed, completely stress-free. So any kind of uh, shearing on this material, uh, you can guarantee that it's going to stay flat. And this is a test that uh, we have a customer actually in Mexico that does carbon steel. Uh, they took uh, a coil and broke it down into two smaller coils. And they took it and they put it through one, just a conventional roller leveler, and then they also took it through a stretcher leveler, and then they cut it into strips just to see what would happen with both uh, scenarios. So this is the strips that were just passed through a roller leveler. And as you can see, the strips are quite twisted. They, they, the sheet looked flat, but then whenever they laser cut the strips, uh, the strips tipped, uh, tended to twist and, and spin to the right or to the left. And again, here's another photo. You can see some of those strips on the end are, are not straight at all. And these are the strips that went through a stretcher leveler. Uh, so you can see quite a difference uh, to, the, to the ones prior to this. And this is the, the product that they'll make with the stretcher level uh, material. So with uh, the Mideast uh, Metals machine, it has state-of-the-art controls. Um, our machine, uh, comparing it to other manufacturers in the world, is very smart. Uh, we make it very easy for their operators to, to plug in the material specifications um, and the machine will just do the rest. So we actually have a stress strain curve on our program here. So this is a screen that the operators will see when they're at the line. Um, and what we do is we actually, on the first stretch, we'll do a test stretch, which we're actually testing the material to figure out what is the yield point of the material so we know how far to stretch. Um, and all that is done completely automatically and it's a, a very simple process to, uh, to operate. So how does stretching change the material? material? Uh, we always get the question, uh, so you stretch it, uh, what really happens to it? Does the, uh, does the properties change? And how does it compare to other types of roller leveling and other leveling technology? And the answer to that is it's no more than what you would get with a roller leveler. Uh, we're not working the material any more than what you would with a roller leveler. We're just working the entire strip of the material uh, to the same effect. So stretchers do not have to elongate the material any more than a roller leveler, but they do actually uh, a little, they do more work because 100% of the material is yielded. Um, with a stretcher level, you'll actually make the strip uh, a little bit physically longer, um, and that's really the only effect that you'll see. 
Um, so if you've got a stretch of leveler and you're running it throughout the entire length of the coil, you will actually sometimes get a few more parts out just because of the stretch of leveling. And this is just a diagram comparing conventional roller leveling to, to stretch of leveling. Um, I won't go into every one of these, but the real thing to, to keep in mind is, is the shape improvement. So with a roller leveler, you can only guarantee anywhere from about 150 to 200 I units of shape improvement. With the stretch of leveler, we can guarantee greater than 3,000 I units. So there's a, uh, a quite a big difference there when you compare the two technologies. Um, the other thing is, is with flatness, with the roller leveler, it's less than five I units. And with the stretcher, it's less than zero to three I units. And the big thing uh, that I think to take away from this is the stability. With a roller leveler, you can never guarantee what you're going to get. Uh, the sheet, again, may look flat, and at times you may laser cut it and it will stay flat, but it's not something that you can guarantee 100% of the time. With a stretcher leveler, uh, the stability and the repeatability of the product is, is better than you'll find anywhere else in the world. And here is just some uh, stretcher level sheets, so you can see just how dead flat those sheets are. And just another picture there. And again, this is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to get sheets that not only look flat, but are going to stay flat after laser cutting. And that is the end of my presentation. I thank you very much.